people talk about nutrients, right? We talk about fat or carbohydrate or protein or cholesterol. Um, but we don't necessarily talk about, you know, foods and whole foods in particular. But when you're referring to an animal-based product, let's say it's bacon or whether it's just a piece of chicken, right? You know, in reality, you're getting a whole complex collection of components. And there's sort of the way that I like to think about it is there's sort of like three villains. There's, there's saturated fat, there's animal protein, and there's cholesterol. And each one of them independently of the other can influence your risk for developing uh, diabetes and insulin resistance. And just like you're saying here, you know, aside from the fat, the animal protein itself is correlated with an increased risk for diabetes. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I use that analogy a lot too, um, but I have more villains than you have. So I add on, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I do love to tell my patients, you're, you're getting your nutrients in a package. And so nobody is sitting down and eating just a bowl of protein. We're getting protein with a lot of other things with it. Um, so two of the other villains, in addition to the ones that you mentioned, so you mentioned saturated fat, you mentioned cholesterol, you mentioned animal protein, which um, are indeed, uh, the scientific research shows, are indeed villains. Uh, I would add heme iron. And uh, people who, you know, my friends actually make fun of me because I talk about heme iron so much. Um, <laughs> But it's really, it's really a reflection of what the science shows about heme iron. So first of all, what is heme iron? What do I mean by that? So uh, heme iron is quite simply iron that we're getting from an animal source. So as opposed to getting it from a plant source. So a lot of people say, oh, well, when you get iron from animal foods, I heard you absorb the iron better and so forth. Um, and there, there is some truth to that. We do tend to absorb iron from animal foods better, but that actually tends to be a problem, believe it or not. Because when you look at um, body stores of iron, you can measure how much iron you have stored in your body. The, the more iron a person has stored in their body, the higher their risk of chronic diseases, especially heart disease and diabetes. Uh, and, and so in trying to unpack this, scientists have looked at what, what is it about heme iron that would cause chronic disease? Well, it has to do with the fact that this is a very um, inflammatory, sort of what we call a pro-oxidant molecule. And not only does it therefore impair the way insulin functions, it's actually also been thought to directly kill the cells that make insulin. And so for lots of reasons, some of these, some of these are you know, not very well understood, but what is very well understood is that when scientists stack up all the different nutrients in foods and look at which ones carry the highest risk of, of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, it's heme iron at the top of the pack. It's, it's unbelievable. In fact, um, it goes way beyond, it goes way beyond uh, just type 2 diabetes. We actually, there was a big study published earlier this year looking at the risk of dying of nine different causes. They took half a million people. And what they found is that people eating more heme iron in the form of red meat and processed meat were more likely to die of nine different causes of death. And they, they, they broke that right down to the fact of it being heme iron as well as the processing chemicals in the processed meat. So, um, but, it, but it was, even if you have unprocessed red meat, just the heme iron in that food. So, um, so that's a big villain um, when, it comes to, when it comes to the risk of diabetes. And this okay. is again, oh sorry, go ahead. Okay, so no, this is great. So we basically have uh, saturated fat, cholesterol, animal protein, heme iron. What's the fifth? So um, the fifth is something I like to call, um, well, it is called TMAO, um, which is short for trimethylamine and oxide, which is uh, quite a mouthful. But what that is, is basically a byproduct of the metabolism of our food by our gut bacteria. So um, another thing I'm kind of obsessed with is the gut bacteria. You're probably figuring that out. <laughs> um, but basically, you know, when we eat certain foods, for example, when we eat eggs, or when we eat red meat, um, even when we eat fish, we take the nutrients in some of the nutrients in those foods like choline or L-carnitine and our gut bacteria tend to transform that into substances that then get metabolized into that molecule TMAO. And what we know about TMAO is that it actually tends to promote heart disease. It, it sort of adds more cholesterol and destabilizes the cholesterol that's sitting inside the walls of your blood vessels. It also tends to promote insulin resistance. And so it's not 
it's, as, it's not just bad enough that you ate the saturated fat or the animal protein or the cholesterol um, or the heme iron in those foods. Um, it was that you now, it, it cooperates with your gut bacteria to make this fifth villain called TMAO. So it's kind of a double whammy. And the really cool thing is, um, as I was saying before, we know that people who follow plant-based diets, especially long-term, they don't have the same gut bacteria. So they actually, studies have shown that they don't have as many of the gut bacteria that help make TMAO in the first place. So that's another way in which you're getting a benefit when you eat a plant-based diet. Yeah, and, and then just like you said, just to make sure everything's uh, super clear here, TMAO is something that your body produces, correct? So you, you, can, you consume foods that are rich in, I believe it's choline and carnitine, and then as a result of that, you're, you're the, the microbes in your gut manufacture TMA, which then gets further metabolized to TMAO, is that right? Exactly. Perfect, okay, so let's, let's recap these villains. We got saturated fat, uh, animal protein, cholesterol, uh, heme iron, and then you know, choline and carnitine, which then metabolize into TMAO, right? So, you know, think about it as the, the metabolic quintuple whammy and to a certain extent. And yeah, and, and there's more. And there's more, exactly right. Just like you said, <laughs> you know, we eat packages of nutrients. And these are just five packages that scientists have identified yeah. are harmful, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't others. Right, right, exactly. I mean, we've got, we've got advanced glycation end products. I mean, these, these are, we're getting into a lot of really long and big words and scientific words, but these are things that we know come in that animal product package. Um, particularly in meat. And, and so that's why there's, um, the research is so strong that when we get those foods out of our diet, it actually allows our body to heal itself in a way. It allows the, our body to become, uh, to have less level, lower levels of inflammation, which then translates into better overall functioning, especially when it comes to the function of insulin. I love it.